Hello, I'm Patrick Farnsworth. Welcome to Access and Privacy Online Commentary. Here's a prior segment from our weekly rundown. It's exciting political times in provinces across Canada. The last day for voting is fast approaching in three provincial elections. In British Columbia, it's Saturday, October 19th. In New Brunswick, it's Monday, October 21st. And in Saskatchewan, it's Monday, October 28th. Our next edition comes out on Election Day in BC. In preparation, we want to highlight FIPA's 2024 election questionnaires. These types of questionnaires are a long-standing tradition in Canadian politics, as civil society groups raise questions to parties and distribute the answers so the public can compare candidates' positions on important matters. As digital rights and personal data security become increasingly pressing concerns for citizens, we've placed a particular emphasis on FIPA's mandate areas. Political parties in BC, Saskatchewan, and New Brunswick were sent the questionnaires and asked to respond outlining how they plan to handle information management, privacy, as well as access and freedom of information. Joining me now is FIPA President Mike Larson. All right, Mike, let's just dive in. Looking at the questions, the first few seem to be put to all parties in all provinces. Why get them on the record on these basic elements? Good question. Uh, These are straightforward questions, and they're intended for us to essentially get a pulse of what the different political parties are thinking when it comes to freedom of information and transparency, uh, privacy, and the management of uh, government information holdings, right? Uh, the uh, information resources that are held by, by public bodies. Um, we just want to get a general baseline understanding of these. And in part, we're, we're posing these questions because we don't find that this information is apparent in the policy platforms that are typically issued by political parties. It's, there's very uneven coverage of issues of transparency, accountability, and privacy. So we want to get that comparative baseline. We also know that what happens in one province does influence what happens in another province. Even though we have different privacy and information laws from province to province in Canada, governments talk to each other and law reforms in one jurisdiction, beneficial or or otherwise, uh, can have ripple effects in other jurisdictions. So it's good for us to have that comparative baseline to see uh, who's, who's really talking the talk and walking the walk when it comes to information and privacy issues. So each province also has at least one specific question. Let's start with BC. They have a lot more questions. Why the difference? Well, I guess the easiest answer is this is FIPA's backyard here in British Columbia, but it's it's beyond that, actually. Um, there's a very different privacy and access to information framework in law in British Columbia. We have the Freedom of Information Protection of Privacy Act. We have the Personal Information Protection Act. We also have the Information Management Act. And so it's important for us to come at this from a couple of different directions and to pose some specific questions since privacy and transparency are, are kind of managed uh, by all of these different pieces uh, of law. And there are ideas identified issues uh, with all of these things. And we have to remember as well that in British Columbia, we actually recently went through a reform to our public records transparency law, the FIPA, uh, under Bill 22. And it represented some dramatic changes. It um, certainly uh, didn't respond to many of the calls for reform from previous uh, legislative committees that had studied the transparency in BC, introduced uh, filing fees, and, and had some other ripple effects too. FIPA was very involved in, in raising awareness and in pushing back on some of the, uh, the problematic aspects of this. And so we want to see, having had that major uh, shift in law, where do political parties see things going from here. Now, the FIPA in BC also has a legislated review cycle. I think this is really important. So, you know, you don't have to have this as the top of uh, issue on an uh, agenda for a political party. Actually, it automatically comes up for review in the legislature. An all-party uh, um, committee of, of legislators will be taking a look at the FIPA and making recommendations as they have in a cycle that goes back for, for many years since the inception of the law. And as it turns out, the party that forms government in British Columbia after the election that we're in the cycle of right now uh, will be charged with reviewing the the FIPA. And so they're going to have to make some decisions um, about what they're going to do to reform the law. It's already come up for that review again. So it's appointed time for us to ask some very specific questions about this. Now, 
We could also note that there are different privacy considerations uh, in British Columbia, and the Office of the Information and Privacy Commissioner has um, issued a number of reports and recommendations. Um, there have been a number of privacy scandals in BC in recent years in terms of data breaches and things like this. So this is a really good time for us to, to be uh, considering these types of, uh, of issues. I would go beyond this and point out that in British Columbia recently, there have been some calls for um, major changes in transparency. The Union of BC Indian Chiefs has issued a call to action um, around uh, increasing First Nations uh, access to information in, in British Columbia and across Canada. We're very interested in this. We support that call. We want to see what the parties have to say. We also know that there's been some political scandals in BC in recent years. In 2019, of course, um, you had the some of the major ombudsperson type organizations in BC, the Privacy Commissioner, uh, Ombudsperson, the Merit Commissioner, they wrote a joint letter in response to what came to be known as the uh, the, the Wood Splitter scandal in Victoria. Uh, and this this had to do with mismanagement of uh, funds, of records, a lack of transparency in the offices of the BC legislature. Uh, it was a bit of a sordid affair. Uh, and, and it gave rise to, I think, public awareness that not all of the offices of the legislature are actually subject to transparency law. So the joint letter from these commissioners was calling for greater coverage of the FIPA uh, and, and the transparency of those offices to prevent issues like this from arising in the future. Well, we haven't seen action on this. So we have some really specific questions that we want to hear from political parties in BC on uh, because they are important, because they are pressing, and because some of them um, have, I think, been left behind in terms of, uh, of law reform, and we want to remind people of that. Interesting. Okay, up next, New Brunswick. The question at first glance seems to be a repeat. Why highlight that framing and background with a separate question? Yeah, so New Brunswick has a Right to Information and Protection of Privacy Act, which essentially uh, is, is analogous to British Columbia's Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. Um, the New Brunswick Act had for a long time been pointed to as uh, as a rising standard uh, in terms of its content. It was a strong access regime that was pointed to. Um, there was a lot of hope in terms of uh, the the New Brunswick model being a model that would be emulated by other jurisdictions. But there has been a lot of criticism recently uh, that gives rise to the question as to whether the application of this law in practice matches its, you know, its promise on paper. Media outlets like the Globe and Mail have uh, criticized the New Brunswick access regime as being very restrictive. And uh, academic research has found that um, transparency in New Brunswick has, has not improved uh, under this iteration of the law here. So we're asking some pointed questions. We're asking political parties to give us a sense of whether the current government has appropriately administered the act. And we're also asking all parties, what they would do to improve transparency in New Brunswick. For people who aren't living in New Brunswick or aren't filing requests in New Brunswick, um, they may not have the, the experience of, you know, actually seeing this law in action. Uh, and so we want to get a sense from uh, the political parties of, of their assessment uh, and what they would do to improve things. Now, Saskatchewan's campaign has had more persistent access-related issues prior to the campaign to the point that it has come up in debates and in platforms. What does their question highlight? Right. The Saskatchewan situation, I think, is a really interesting one. Listeners might recall that a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to talk a little bit with you about the uh, polling research that BC FIPA has conducted recently through uh, Ipsos. Um, and we were asking a whole range of questions about transparency uh, and information management issues. But generally, we found that there was very, very strong public support for the idea that public agencies, government bodies should comply with the transparency and privacy laws that they are subject to. And we also saw strong support for the, um, the roles of the independent offices, for example, the Office of the Information and Privacy Commissioner, that are in place to hold public agencies accountable. Right. So we saw that in our polling. Uh, and then we we flipped to the Saskatchewan situation here. There have been some uh, significant scandals in recent times around ministries in the Saskatchewan government just declining to comply with decisions from the information commissioner uh, who was appointed by the Legislative Assembly. We've also seen that there has been little action on recommendations that have been made by the commissioner, but also by the representative for children and youth and the auditor general. In other words, the people of Saskatchewan are 
paying for these organizations to do the good work of holding government responsible for its compliance with, with the law and making recommendations for improvement and reform. And yet we're seeing little action there. We're seeing in, in many instances um, public bodies ignoring these, these recommendations. So we're asking political parties what they're going to do to ensure that the government and that the ministers of the government um, actually act on the recommendations of these duly appointed officials um, who are, again, ostensibly there to ensure that the government we have is a transparent government. All right. So how will the responses to these questionnaires be made accessible to the public? And what should voters be looking for in the candidates' responses? Great question. You can already visit the FIPA website and take a look at the resources we have available there. We've got the pages for British Columbia, for New Brunswick, for Saskatchewan, which include all of the questions that we've posed in the questionnaires to the political parties exactly as, as we have posed them. Uh, you can get a bit of background information um, for the questions, and you can also see the responses that we receive from parties, uh, which will be posted as, as they are as they come in. Um, so that's already going to be available, and we'll be adding to that as responses come in over the coming weeks. Now, what are we and, and what are members of the public hoping for with these responses? Uh, I guess I'd say a few things. So on, on the one hand, uh, we're hoping that political parties actually do respond um, to this, that they recognize the importance of these issues and that they take the time to contribute. Um, certainly FIPA has done this kind of work in the past, and we have seen some fantastic responses from political parties that really outline some issues. Um, so we're hoping to see the responses. And from, from my perspective, I'm really hoping to see substance, and I think the public should expect that too. You see, the issues of transparency and privacy are issues that political parties don't like to appear to be on the wrong side of. Which political party is going to run on a platform of unaccountability or secret government or, um, you know, running roughshod over privacy? Um, so all political parties, I think, have experience talking a good talk when it comes to this. And that can be reflected in statements, you know, policy statements in, in platforms that say this government's committed to transparency or this government will, you know, increase public access to information or do better to protect personal information. Well, fine, but how? That's the that's the issue, right? What are the specifics? What are the steps that are actually going to be taken? And responses to these questionnaires, I think, will give us an opportunity to see if there is substance in any of these responses and what that substance is, and hopefully to have a comparative basis. Do, do political parties see the need for some significant reform to our laws? Do they see need for uh, different policies and training? And how would they address some of the problems that are that are that have been identified, not just by FIPA, but by uh, information and privacy commissioners across the country? So I think people should be looking for, for substance in these responses, getting past the rhetoric and getting to the details. Now, we're really hoping to have responses from the political parties uh, to our questionnaires uh, available in advance of, of Election Day. And we'll certainly be putting those resources online, sending out bulletins to uh, our, our subscribers to remind them that these resources are there and that they can take a look at some of these responses. And a as we go forward, we'll also be looking for ways to effectively summarize and kind of capture the essence of some of the responses, making sure we always provide the originals, um, but also make things a little bit more accessible so people can have that basis of comparison. So. Uh, I really encourage people, especially during this election season, to kind of keep an eye on, on FIPA's uh, website and distribution list as this stuff comes out. Have there been any challenges in getting candidates to participate or fully respond in the past? Yeah, yeah, there have been some challenges. Uh, we've had some success with this. There have been instances where FIPA's posted these kind of questionnaires, and uh, we've seen some really strong responses. And, you know, the advantage of that is that if a party does form government, or if they're even if they're in opposition, you know, we're able to to hold them to their stated positions when they were running for election uh, regarding information and privacy issues. So when we do get responses, those are, I think, really useful. We can say, this is what you stood for, at least this is what you said you stood for uh, or against. Um, we have in information about the previous questionnaires um, that we've run in different election cycles available via the, the FIPA website that uh, people can check out. But not all parties respond. Not all parties respond in detail. Why would that be? I think, you know, sometimes parties just don't want to be on the record about these issues. Taking transparency and privacy seriously is not difficult to do, but it does require a commitment and often it requires change. It certainly requires leadership uh, from the top. Um, and, and, you know, I think both transparency and secrecy flow from, from leadership, right? They set the tone for things. Uh, if political parties don't want to be uh, transparent. They don't want to to improve uh, information and privacy rights and the management of, of public information. Uh, well, then they, they have incentive not to provide detailed responses to this. 
So we have seen that in the past, uh, unfortunately. Um, but you can take a look at the show notes for this week's episode. Um, check out our questionnaire page and you can see all the questions that we're raising. Uh, you can see questions that have been raised in the past and you can track the progress of the different parties as they are responding or, or as the case may be, not responding to questions. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike. So wrapping up, anything else that you want to add? Yeah, absolutely. I think maybe two more points. Um, so one is, of course, we are really hoping to see the parties respond to these questions and we'll make the responses available to everybody. We'll let everyone know. You can go to the FIPA website as a resource on this. Um, but you can also press people yourself to respond to these questions. You can definitely take the questions that FIPA has developed and posed and, and uh, go and ask them of the people vying for your vote in your riding. If you happen to be in British Columbia, New Brunswick or Saskatchewan, where people are looking uh, for, for your ballot and they're having conversations and town halls and forums about this, well, ask people who are running for office some of these questions about how they view transparency and privacy. You don't even have to credit us for, for it. You can definitely borrow these questions and use them yourself if, if you find these to be important issues, which since you're listening to this, I think you probably do. Um, so yeah, ask people directly. And, and you could also ask, uh, this is my second point, I think, you can also ask um, parties if you're having conversations with representatives, if people are door knocking, you can ask people, hey, have you responded to FIPA's questions? questionnaires about information and privacy issues yet, uh, because those are issues that matter to me and I'd like to see where you stand. Can put some pressure on political parties to respond. It shouldn't take long for parties to respond to this. I guess that's an important point, right? It shouldn't take long. Really, it should take uh, a few minutes for people to say, okay, let's pull some content from our stated positions and our policy documents on this, our platform, and fill in the blanks on these responses. This shouldn't be something where you have to invent your response from scratch. And if you do, I think that's that's a finding in and of itself. So we're hoping to see some uh, some quick turnaround on this, uh, but everyone's welcome to help us uh, to, to get the word out uh, and to pose these important questions. Thanks. Access and Privacy Online reviews the headlines and delivers deeper commentary on a regular basis. Be sure to subscribe to get the full episodes every week and get notifications when we release show segments and other commentary throughout the week. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a good one.